Hello everyone, welcome back to Marvel's Midnight Suns. Now in this final episode, I just want to show you what I got up to having completed the final mission in the previous episode. So the first thing I did was I went about to complete this challenge, or the challenges, that were available for Iron Man and Magic. I encountered these challenges or unlocked these challenges earlier in this gameplay, but I struggled to complete the Iron Man challenge and I thought it was because Iron Man was not high level enough that perhaps if I got better cards or went increases level, it would become easier to complete. But having completed them, I just realized that it has nothing to do with that. It's really a puzzle game and the number of cards or the type of cards you get are set. So basically with those cards, regardless of strength of your superhero, you just need to complete the puzzle on how best to defeat your enemies or complete the objective. When you complete the objective, you earn two things. You earn a Midnight Sun suit and a legendary combat ability. Now, the Midnight Sun suit, you will get them anyway towards the end of the story line. That's just a given. But I suppose if you do complete, you do get access to a legendary combat ability that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. So for example, you find more coil, send it my way. If I have a look at Iron Man, this is the legendary combat ability that we unlocked. So it's Hellfire Beam, 103 damage, and it damages each enemy in a line, which is something different from Iron Man's Reptor. And every time you redraw, you add 51 damage. Now, Iron Man's abilities or cards actually give you a lot of redraws. For example, if you do heads up, you get plus two redraws. If you use Leave It To Me, you also get plus two redraws. So basically, because of his repertoire, you can actually add a lot more damage to this card. 103, if you redraw four times, that's going to be at least 300 damage. That's pretty cool. The other thing I did was during my playthrough, I really just focused on the story mission because I had an issue with the field of vision when exploring the grounds. So moving the camera like this too much can make me nauseous, unfortunately. So I left that towards the end and after I completed the story mission. And you'll see from this map here that I've pretty much unlocked almost all the grounds, well, quite a bit of it. I've unlocked a lot of waypoints, a lot of fast travel points. I've also unlocked a lot of arcane chests. You'll see that we've also unlocked five legendary arcane chests. One, two, and then three here, so five here. In unlocking or exploring the grounds, I also unlocked all the words of power. Open, reveal, purify, and break. Essentially, unlocking these words of power allows you to explore more of the grounds because some areas, for example, are obstructed by a half-broken wall. You can't get through it, so you need to use these words of power of break to actually break that wall. Some are bridges that are missing like a middle section, so you would select reveal and it will reveal that missing bridge segment so to speak and you can then cross the bridge so highly suggest you complete this if you really want to explore the grounds in also exploring the grounds what I happen to discover more of are havens Ooh, I can't use it with Captain America let me go somewhere here someone might be free to have a chat with me where are they no one's missing. Um, yes, Hunter, invite to Haven. So, during the storyline, you automatically unlock one or two, but the more you explore the grounds, the more Havens you unlock. And what's the benefit of the Haven? Well, the Haven basically ensures you gain major friendship XP gains. So if you are focused on getting friendship gains, because they actually do affect, for example, things like your combo. So your team friendship level, you get at level one, you get one hero combo. At level eight, you get two hero combos. And then within each one as well, the higher the friendship level, you also gain other benefits with that superhero. So if you want to do that, then exploring the grounds would open up more havens for you to visit because each haven can only be used once and each hero can only join a haven once. The other thing I also unlocked, in the last maybe two episodes ago, 
I was questioning, I had a request to say, brew a few items in Agatha's cauldron. And I was like, where's the cauldron? I saw a cauldron here, but it was empty and there's no fire. I explored the grounds and I completed a quest, and then now there's actually fire. Ta-da! So this cauldron I can now use. And I wish I found it earlier, because it's actually very useful. You can brew or craft a few things. You can craft combat items, you can see here, Major Strength Tonic, uh, Makery Totem, a Healing Salve, and a Fury Totem. You can also craft essences or brew essences, right? So during my playthrough, I thought the only way to get essences is either through uh, missions by salvaging duplicate cards or even going to the central command center and buying them. So here you can also go to shield exchange and perhaps exchange for some Blueprints, some attack essence. This isn't always there all the time. Um, in this case, it's the other way around. You actually use attack essence to get credit. Not too bad. So the cauldron is actually pretty flexible and usable. Beneficial in that sense. The other thing it can also do is, aside from crafting essence, you can also exchange the essence. So here, if you have a Wondergore Everbloom, you can exchange 25 attack essence for 50 skill essence. So technically you get twice as much of a different type of essence, as long as you get the Everbloom. You can also craft gifts, a rare gift and an epic gift. And then finally, you can also craft a palette. Now all these recipes don't come unlocked by default. Again, as you explore the grounds, I found these recipes lying around on tables, chairs, anywhere, and they just get added to this repertoire of recipes. Now finally, I did mention that we unlocked five legendary arcane chests and I just wanted to leave it to this episode unopened um, but to open it now to see what it has to offer. So let's open one now. So I won't open all of them but in this case it gives a palette, two head drops, a head prop and a face prop. So yeah, all these legendary arcane chests, they don't really give a lot of, I guess, usable material, so to speak. It's more aesthetic. Sometimes you get a combat item, in this case a legendary combat item called Overdrive Serum. Gain heroism equal to the cost of all heroic cards in your hand, and it's free to use. So that's it. So that's what I got up to, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm planning to release a simple beginner's guide on Marvel's Midnight Suns. There are a few things that I played through when I look back and reflect. I realized it would be great if I knew about this or that. So I'm hoping to just release some content just to help people along if you're new to the game. I hope you look forward to it. Thank you for joining me. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.